Hello everyone. Welcome to my Royal Family official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Princess Anne showed off her best graces when she was spotted leaving London's 104 Paul Malls, the Reform Club. The Princess Royal was seen in pictures donning a button-down jacket with structured lapels and an exquisite fitted blue-green chevron print blazer, along with a pleated knee-grazing skirt. The princess accessorized her grey two-piece ensemble with a silky turquoise blouse, which she knotted around her neck for an effortlessly stylish look. A variety of striking black accessories, such as a leather crossbody bag draped over one shoulder and a matching pair of slip-on heels featuring a gold bow design, completed the ensemble. She had on a pair of black gloves as well. Her jewellery completed the ensemble. The princess donned a stunning gold brooch shaped like the Rajiana Bird of Paradise, which is the national bird of Papua New Guinea, along with a set of delicate gold drop earrings. After meeting the Prime Minister and the Governor-General of Papua New Guinea in Port Moresby, the royal first wore the brooch in 2022 during her Platinum Jubilee tour of Australia and Papua New Guinea. She wore it with a stunning emerald green A-line dress at a reception for local business leaders and politicians. Anne had her hair up in a heavy chin and as usual, and her makeup was so light that it was hardly noticeable. When the king's sister, Sarah Ferguson, and Duchess Sophie attended the Easter matins service at Windsor Castle, she donned a sage green chevron print outfit. She accessorized her ensemble with taupe swede riding boots from the House of Brewer, recycling her chissest coat. Anne's striking feathered fascinator and matching tan suede bag completed her stylish look. Prior to that, the mother of two and her sister-in-law, the Duchess of Edinburgh, left for a unique joint engagement. In light of King Charles's continued cancer treatment, Anne and Sophie hosted a reception at Buckingham Palace to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Korean War in his place. In a teal wool dress that was thought to have belonged to Zara Tyndall's late mother, Queen Elizabeth Yu, a mother exuded calmness. Under her mandarin collar, Anne wore a striped silk scarf that she fastened to her heart-shaped brooch for a flash of colour. Duchess Sophie, meanwhile, wore a silk flowery dress with a pleated skirt and a collarless neckline, channeling her finest teal energy. During her journey to Saudi Arabia, with her sister Princess Eugenie, Princess Beatrice was photographed sporting her second flowery ensemble of the week. The daughter of Sarah Ferguson was spotted sporting a never-before-seen Hill House outfit called the Syndra Floral Georgette Dress in Black A Cat. The dress had structured shoulders that lowered into flowy sleeves and a voluminous mid-length skirt with an integrated belt that cinched it in at the waist. She wore barely any makeup and her hair was combed loosely for a more laid-back vibe. At the World Economy Forum in Riyadh, she was spotted posing for a phonograph beside Walfa al the founder of the female network playbook, and Dima al the secretary-general of the Digital Cooperation Organization. Such a pleasure to meet the ever-inspiring H.R.I. Princess Beatrice at at WEF hashtag special meeting 24, wrote Dima. Motivated by her advocacy and dedication as a remarkable, coal-oriented female leader, I'm happy to talk about it women underscore Sparks' efforts to develop the upcoming wave of female leaders, anticipate collaborating on shared projects and promoting constructive transformation to enable women and young people. Just one day prior, the princess and 34-year-old Eugenie was spotted at the forum. The Selma dress from Cezanne, a pale blue brodery, anglaise dress with long sleeves and a belted waist, was Beatrice's second exquisite appearance. She wore the dress, which was produced by one of Princess Kate's favorite labels, with a customized clutch from Anya Hindmarch and designed block heels from Chanel called the Lambskin Ballerines in beige and black. Eugenie, meanwhile, subtly altered her Roizen floral print pleated midi dress from Erdem. She wore it with her husband Jack Brooksbank at the Duke of Edinburgh's memorial service at Westminster Abbey on March 22, 
2022 by layering a black long sleeve top underneath the flowy floral dress. The hopeful snuffle trim flat slingback pumps by Dune were also worn by the Queen. Pretty flowers are a wardrobe mainstay for Princess Beatrice. When the mother of one made an appearance at the Spotify hosted talk, The Future of Tech in the UK event, she looked amazing in the veneration dress from Vampire's Wife. The figure flattering dress has the brand's typical metallic sheen, a belted waist, and a tiered ruffle skirt. When Eduardo Mapelli Mosi's wife attended an event honoring Gabriella Peacock's second book, Two Weeks to a Younger You, at the Broadwick Soho Hotel in London, she gave her signature florals a different daytime twist. The King's niece looked stunning in the Me Plus M watercolor floral print short swing dress, accessorizing it with Jimmy Q's Romy 100 Burgundy Velvet Pumps. There are now more information available about Prince Harry's impending trip to the UK. On May 8, in Street Paul's Cathedral, the Duke of Sussex will make his way back to London for a Thanksgiving ceremony commemorating the 10th anniversary of the Invictus Games, which he established in 2014. Additionally, it was disclosed that actor Damien Lewis will be present in a Sunday Instagram post published by the official Invictus Games account. The Invictus Games social media team posted the following alongside a vintage photo of the 39-year-old Prince Harry supporting a competitor. The Invictus Games Foundation will celebrate 10 years of changing lives and saving lives for the service of Thanksgiving at Street Paul's Cathedral on May 8. It went on to say, We will be joined by our patron, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, actor Damien Lewis, and members of the worldwide Invictus community to mark the occasion. According to an official release, Damien, the actor most known for his roles in Band of Brothers and Homeland, will deliver the poem Invictus, while Harry will read. Representatives from all of the participating nations in the Invictus Games, as well as members of the veteran community and wounded, ill, and injured servicemen, will also be present. As the service is being led by the very Reverend Andrew Tremlett, Dean of Street Pauls, a selection of community members, supporters, and beneficiaries will read. The Invictus Games were established by Prince Harry with the goal of assisting the global recovery of wounded, ill, and veteran athletes by providing them with the opportunity to compete in Paralympic-style sports. Royal analysts predict that Harry's family will not be traveling with him on this particular trip, while it is unknown if his wife Meghan Markle and their two children Prince Archie, four, and Princess Lilibet, two, will be present. With his impending journey, Harry will make his first trip to the UK since traveling there to meet his father, King Charles, in the wake of his cancer diagnosis in February. Harry was taken directly to Clarence House upon his arrival, where he spent 45 minutes with his father, who had postponed his own visit to Sandringham to see his younger son. The brief meeting marked the father and son's first significant time together, following Queen Elizabeth Hughes' passing in September 2022. Despite being present at his father's coronation in May of last year, Harry and his father are believed to have had little communication as a result of the controversy of the Duke's enlightening biography spare. It is widely known that Charles personally informed his younger son Harry of his startling health news prior to making the announcement via a statement from Buckingham Palace. A portion of the statement said, and further matter of concern was identified during the King's recent hospital operation for benign prostate enlargement, a type of cancer has been detected by further diagnostic testing. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.